Do I do it here or? Yeah. 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 Um, good evening or good afternoon. Depends on where you are, I suppose. Um, my name's Alan Murray. I'm the current chairperson of the Metropolitan Local Land Council. Um, and it's a function that we do well. Normally, we would normally have a smoking, smoking ceremony to invite you um, through the through the lighting of the fire and also walking through the smoke because we have a traditionally it's a cleansing process to walk through through the smoke. So today, um, in modern times, um, we actually go through the smoke. Um, I, I suppose to be, to be stress free or COVID free. And, uh, and to make sure that uh, you can't um, function <laughs> um, in order to be prepared for, you know, to do anything on, on this beautiful land called Australia. So the other f uh, function of smoking ceremonies, when the tall ships came through Sydney Harbour, through Botany Bay, uh, our communities on the eastern seaboard of Australia and also here in New South Wales and through Sydney, Clans were lighting smoke to say invaders are coming to to this area, and traditionally, when invaders come to this area, we don't ask them to stay. We ask them to move on, go to another continent, and don't settle here. So, unfortunately, that's what had occurred. We never gave up this country. It was never signed it over. It was never ceded, and we certainly never gave up. And we continue to fight for our lands across here in Sydney, New South Wales and also other parts of Australia and all the different islands. So I want to pay respects to any Indigenous person who are part of this coverage and to acknowledge you in this audience for you to be witnessing a welcome the country, but more importantly, to acknowledge that you are walking on Aboriginal land. If you want to walk with us, I'll certainly walk with you and my people will walk with you. Know this is that we've been here for 40,000 years, 60,000 years, 120,000 years. We have the knowledge, the survival, sustain, and also move as well. We know that our resources are starting to be depleted here in Australia, and we know that for a fact. With that fact, it's best to be controlling what we have in terms of resources and making sure our resources last rather than scorned the way it is at the moment. So with that, I want to pay respects to all Aboriginal people, Indigenous people, uh, across Australia, but also across the world. If you're a First Nation person of, of a continent or country, you're an Indigenous person as well. With that, I want to pay respects to the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. This is where we are here today, on the lands here in Marrickville. And, and also I want to pay respects to the people in the audience. With that, if you know our catch cry, join with me. Always was, always will be. Aboriginal land. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, so I believe that uh, if things are... Hi, everybody. We are live. All right, start again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Tim. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, and I'm coming to you from Northern Land. My name's Maze. My pronouns are they, them, and I'm here from Bunurong Country. Welcome to the launch of Game Workers Australia, the national trade union for games workers. And so thank you so much for that welcome to country, Uncle Alan Murray. Thank you so much. And thank you all of you for joining us as we launch this brand new union. Um, look, this launch stream is here for you all to get an introduction to what we do, um, who we are and where we're headed in the future. So shortly, we're going to hear from some of our amazing members of ours who have already benefited from being in the union, um, what being a member means for you and for them as well, and a QA session uh, at the end. And all of that interspersed with some beautiful messages uh, from our friends. Um, we've got a raffle to thank everyone for joining us. And of course, a finale video right at the end from Sally McManus at the ACTU. It's going to be a pretty amazing stream um, and a pretty amazing party for all of you in Sydney. So first, it's my absolute pleasure to announce Jill McCabe, um, the Head of Professionals Australia, who's been working with us for the last few years to get this union going. Welcome, Jill. Thank you so much, Tim and Mays, and thank you to Uncle Alan Murray 
of the Wiradjuri and Camilla Roy nations for that wonderful welcome to country. I'd like to point out that Uncle Alan is on the Metropolitan Local Aboriginal Land Council and he's been working hard for many years for economic and self-determination for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples who reside in the Metropolitan Local Aboriginal Land Council boundaries in New South Wales and he's been doing an amazing job. He's also an amazing elder and he's protecting the knowledge, the wisdom and culture of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people uh, across this country. I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet across the country today. I'm on the land of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation here in Victoria, and I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. I extend that respect to other elders and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples right across the country and here today, as we all work together to give effect to the Uluru Statement from the heart and true reconciliation in Australia. And it's my absolute pleasure to welcome you all to the launch of Game Workers Australia, a new group that we've established in Professionals Australia, specifically to represent workers in the video games industry. For the first time in Australian history, video game workers will officially be part of a union that will advise and represent you in your employment and will be advocating for a stronger and more inclusive video games industry. Professionals Australia is a registered union under the Fair Work Act and we have over 20,000 members. We represent other workers in Australia's digital industries, including IT workers, engineers and software developers. We also represent other professions, including pharmacists, scientists, architects, translators and interpreters, who, believe it or not, face similar challenges in their employment to game workers, as many professional employees do. The launch of Game Workers Australia today is really symbolic for us. It's the 1st of May. It's International Workers' Day, a day that commemorates the historic struggles and gains made by workers and their unions. Unions like Professionals Australia have played an integral role in securing improvements in pay, conditions and legal protections for workers in Australia. Unions have led the charge for minimum pay and core conditions of employment, paid overtime, penalties for shift work, recreation leave, sick leave, allowances, parental leave, equal pay for work of equal value, workplace health and safety laws, anti-discrimination laws, workers' compensation and superannuation. Put simply, without the dedicated and continued efforts of Australian workers, we simply would not have access to the industrial rights and the services that exist for all of us today. It's also important to recognise that unions like Professionals Australia are also instrumental at the workplace level. At Professionals Australia, we've negotiated enterprise bargaining agreements for workers and we've gained pay increases and better conditions in some very tough industrial relations environments. And without our involvement, workers wouldn't have had access to that higher level of pay and those improved conditions. And we've also represented hundreds of workers each year in employment matters, matters that involve performance and disciplinary issues, redundancies, unfair dismissals, health and safety, returning to work after injury, bullying and harassment. And that's why joining Game Workers Australia will make a difference to you and your career. The Australian games industry is a draw card for highly skilled and creative workers like you. And yet many of you experience poor paying conditions. You're engaged on short term contracts. You work excessive hours without paid overtime and you also encounter work related stress and bullying. I think it's unfair that the video game sector, which is worth over $3 billion to the Australian economy every year and reaps so much benefit, and yet you, who actually contribute and generate that economic value, uh, don't share equally or even fairly in the wealth generated by this industry. When you join Game Workers Australia, you can feel secure that your employment and workplace health and safety rights will be backed by a union that understands the unique challenges and issues that you face in the games industry. We'll be working with Mays and Tim and others who actually establish Game Workers Unite 
and who have worked so hard to obtain industrial representation for you. And actually, um, I'd like to acknowledge the fantastic work of both Tim and Mays, um, their incredible commitment to game workers and their strong advocacy for industrial representation. This is a real milestone um, for Professionals Australia, but also for game workers. And I'm really looking forward to continuing our partnership and building our strength and getting better outcomes for all of you in your employment. I also want to acknowledge Justine McCarthy, the Deputy Director of Professionals Australia in New South Wales, and Brooke Mosh, our Digital Communications Officer, who have made the establishment of Game Workers Australia in our union possible. And thanks to David Hayden and everyone else at GWU who've been involved in organising this, this wonderful event today. I'm really enjoying it and I'm sure that we'll continue uh, to enjoy the rest of the day. And finally, I look forward to us building our membership. I want to hear from you. Uh, I want to work with you to achieve the remuneration, the recognition and the rewards you all deserve. So thank you, everyone. And please join Game Workers Australia so we can build a better future together. Thank you. Hi, my name's David Hayden. I'm a supporter and collaborator of Game Workers Australia since the first seed was sown in Free Play 2018. It is my great pleasure today to introduce a collection of solidarity videos from Games Workers Australia supporters from all over the world and welcome videos from Professional Australia members and staff. We will play them throughout today's proceedings. So here is the first set of videos and remember, Workers United will never be defeated. Hi everyone, I'm Lana, and this is my very mad cat, Cyrus, from Indie Games Stream, the Freak Museum. As a longtime supporter of unionization in the games industry, and as a member of Game Workers Unite Montreal, the Game Workers Coalition, we all want to formally congratulate Game Workers Australia on your historic launch, and wish you all many victories going forward. Solidarity and happy May Day from myself, from Cyrus, and from Game Workers Unite Montreal. Welcome to Game Workers Australia. Welcome as members of Professionals Australia and on behalf of all the uh, IBM um, members of PA, uh, we're glad to have you in our union. Yeah, welcome uh, everyone. Uh, it's great to have you. Thank you for bringing the fun into IT, uh, <laughs> making things other than boring enterprise software. Um, it's great to have you with us and yeah, solidarity for the, for the future. It's great to have you here, GWA. Um, anything to make us stronger, um, will hopefully give us more success in the future. So thank you for thank you for joining us. Thank you so much uh, to Jill and to everyone at Professionals Australia for their support and making this happen. Um, look, let's kick things off with our first raffle. Um, so back to you, Taya, in Sydney. Thank you very much, Tim. Uh, all right, so we have our official May Day cap on loan to us from the Plumbers Union. Uh, so I'm going to be drawing a name out of the cap. So these are all people who've registered and put their names down. Oh, okay. Uh, Eliar Eliana May, congratulations. You've won our, our first raffle, uh, which is a $100 voucher for JB Hi-Fi. Uh, I think from memory, Eliana is not physically here with us in Sydney. So we will get it out to you in whatever way we can. Uh, just to uh, add to this, uh, so Eliana may have won our first raffle here, but when you join the union, when you join a union, you are immediately a winner. You are already getting access to better benefits. You are putting in uh, your efforts, your solidarity to get better conditions, better pay, uh, and better treatment in your workplace. So, you know, a raffle, Eliana was lucky today, but if you join your union, you'll be lucky forever. So thank you so much. Back to you, comrades. The Australian game development community has almost everything it needs to be outstandingly successful. Talent, creativity, innovation, an utterly mediocre national broadband network. The only thing our community lacks is its own trade union. Until now. So congratulations on the launch of Game Workers Australia, because developers united will never be defeated. So I just wanted to say welcome to the Game Workers Australia and I've got our rail delegates in Sydney and New South Wales trains and other places to uh, greet you all. So 
Thank you, game workers. Yeah, welcome, guys. Uh, it's really great to see members of the uh, the gaming community join uh, Professionals Australia. Um, stand together. Thanks, brothers. Game workers, welcome to Professionals Australia, the best union around. Yes. Uh, yeah, just welcome to Professional Australia. So you're most welcome, and I hope you can contribute to the uh, our action if you can support us. That's all. Thanks. Yes, welcome all all game workers. Um, it's really good that you've joined PA. Uh, you'll get very well supported, not just by the union, but when we can, we'll support you, and so will other parts of the um, membership. Thank you. Welcome to Professionals Australia. Uh, you've made a great choice. Um, these guys are professionals, and they'll certainly help you out as much as what they help us. the community ever since uh, late 2018. Um, I've seen GWA grow from like a small chapter of a global movement towards um, fighting against uh, exploitation in the industry to a bona fide organizing force in the Australian Union movement, which we are commemorating on this fine May Day. I'm honored to have played a small part in all of it. Um, ever since I was a child, I have been exposed to progressive political movements and unions thanks to my parents. Ever, even outside of their day jobs. My mum and dad have been helping out marginalised and struggling members of the community of Campbelltown, of where they're from. It is with that selflessness and desire to help others that my parents had that I wanted to do my part too, even if it was in the games industry. My path to the video game industry was, all, was unique, but also all too common at the same time. I graduated from what was then still called Quantum College in Surrey Hills in 2010, just when, um, just in the middle of the GFC, which was decimating the Australian games industry at the time. My education came at a time when the Unity game engine was still in its infancy, uh, when Apple was still coming to terms with the fact that, that those filthy video games were making the most money on the App Store, and that when juniors and graduates were being sent to the Team Bondi meat grinders, to endlessly work on the protracted development of L.A. Noir. It's not really a great time to be looking for work straight out of uni. But I found my feet as a producer in the digital agency space, then in the pokey gaming space. Sadly, I was laid off three days before Christmas on that first pokey job just to balance the books of the corporate overlords. I struggled to get permanent work for, two, no, for six, six whole months until I lucked out at, in the ad agency space as a digital producer. There, I would spend the majority of my of six years, outside of a year um, stint in pokey, pokies again, working to, while trying to survive living in expensive Sydney as I felt like my dream was slipping by me. In 2018, I turned 30. I became bitter that I was getting nowhere with my aspirations to be a games producer. I was seeing my best mate who had spent most of high school and uni wanting the same dream as me, ach achieving those goals, working abroad as a games developer. I knew if I kept going down this road, merely surviving, I would become the jaded, bitter soul I didn't want to be. So I began to attend more industry meetups, started doing more un Unity tutorials, and research what I really needed to do to get my foot in the door. This is where GWA came in. I don't exactly remember how I got in touch with them, but it quickly, I quickly began to realise just how important they would be for myself, but also to the games industry in Australia too. An opportunity to combine my passions of game development and social justice was something I just didn't consider, but I'm so glad that it came to be. Through GWA, I've made great friends and allies, 
learned a lot about labor laws, community groups, and marginalized developers. GWA gave me the resolve to finally land a role in the games industry, along with the tools I needed to help me stand up for myself and for my peers in the volatile game dev workforce. There's a lot more I could say about GWA and its, and its importance and potential, but I'll leave you with one last thought. If you're a games worker, whether it be a programmer, artist, audio engineer, writer, student, or producer, please join your union, preferably GWA. <laughs> um, the more voices we have, the stronger we will be to protect and improve the conditions of our young and growing industry. The more hands we have on deck will mean more resources to prevent the horrible conditions employees of Team Bondi, Mountains, and countless other toxic studios have had to endure, and some still do. We have seen what happens to the bosses. We have seen what happens when the bosses decide the conditions and remunerations of our labor. It is time we called the shots about how we are treated in this great medium. Thanks, everyone, and please welcome Callum to the stage. Thank you, Mitch. Um, hey, everyone. Uh, my name's Callum, pronouns he, him. And I'd like to speak to you today uh, to everybody who's watching um, who is unsure if they want to join their union or if it's worth doing. I was in your shoes many years ago. And since then, um, I've had a very positive experience. And I'd like to share that experience with you and hopefully help you make that decision for yourself. I've been a Professionals Australia member for many years now. Um, and in fact, I first joined PA when a representative from PA attended a Game Workers Unite meetup. Um, seeing the support and the recognition that they were willing to give our industry, I signed up on the spot. And shout out to Tom, who's here today. <laughs> Since then, I've utilized many, many of the services and benefits that Professionals Australia offers, and I've never been disappointed. I've referenced their salary information, I've utilized their contract review service, I've attended union delegate training and attended seminars, and I've made new connections with other members through their meetups. Um, and after seeing those videos that we saw before from the other PA members, I wanted to um, give a particular shout out to the, uh, the other PA members who I attended delegate training with, who were from across a number of sectors, especially um, local government. Um, I was there as a fish out of water, um, completely, completely different industry, completely different uh, career experience to the rest of them, and I felt so welcomed and so supported. Um, I was very pleasantly surprised, and um, it really helped uh, create that sense of community and togetherness and solidarity with all of the different people, all of the different industries who are in PA. Um, so most critically, when I needed legal assistance, PA provided me with an industrial officer who was knowledgeable, attentive, and communicative. And despite all of their incredible help, I never had to pay a cent over my union dues. They were assigned to me the same day that I reached out to PA, and the stress relief alone from knowing that someone had my back made it all worth it. If I had instead had to find and pay for my own lawyer, I'm confident it would have cost me much, much more than the union dues I'd already been paying, and without any of the other benefits. You can think of a union membership like an insurance policy for your rights at work. And just like you can't have buy car insurance after you've already crashed your car, don't wait until you've got a problem to join the union. Make sure they're already there for you in case anything happens. I never thought ahead of time that I would come to need their assistance in this way, but it's the best rainy day fund that you can have. And I'm so glad that I had made that decision. All in all, I'm very, very glad that I made the decision all those years ago to become a Professionals Australia paying member. It's paid off not only financially, but in many of the more important ways that I've talked to you about today. Now I'm even more excited um, to be a member through GWA, through Game Workers Australia, um, a branch of PA for my industry. I hope hearing my story helps you make the decision to sign up to GWA and I hope to see you soon at our meetings and our meetups. The future of the Australian games industry just got that much brighter thanks to GWA and PA's partnership, and I can't wait to see what comes next. Thank you so much for listening.
Congratulations to Game Workers Australia, solidarity from A Better ABK and Game Workers Alliance. Very excited for you. Enjoy your launch day, solidarity forever. Hi, I'm Tom. I've been a member of Professionals Australia since I was 19 um, and I've been really active in the union for years now. I wish you all the best uh, with your launch uh, for Game Workers. Hi there, uh, my name's Scott Crawford. I'm the Victorian Director of PA, and I just wanted to extend a really warm welcome to you all. I know that everyone in the Victorian team is really looking forward to working with you uh, in the weeks, months, and, and years ahead. So welcome aboard. My name's Thomas. I'm an organiser with Professionals Australia in Victoria. Um, very pleased to have our new friends on board at Game Workers Australia and looking forward to working with you all in the future. Hi, everybody. I would love to welcome Justine to the stage, please. And a huge thank you to Mitch and Callum for um, sharing their stories. Uh, really inspiring work. Um, and it's just been an honour working with you over the last few years as well. Um, and thanks to those special messages. Um, so when we've been working with Professionals Australia, it's been really important to us to keep our existing community free and open for all workers. Um, you know, it's something that is a huge part of the games industry as it is, us, you know, the freedom of information and that kind of thing. So for that reason, we still have our free tier membership. You can join us on Discord um, at gameworkers.com.au forward slash join. You'll have access to all the initiatives and help that the community, including Tim and I, and all of our elected community organisers give. Um, and everyone who's in the Discord who can share their solidarity or their experiences with different work conditions. A huge part of improving this industry for us is the spread of knowledge of what we are all entitled to. The bare minimums that our industry is currently failing to meet or how to keep you and your mates in your small studio in a fair and happy environment. Um, our next tier, tier one, is the first paid membership with Professionals Australia where you start contributing to the collective resources through the union membership. This is especially great for contractors as we have access to the hugely discounted professional indemnity insurance um, and, and all of the <laughs> benefits um, that you get from being a member. Um, you can call up Professionals Australia for workplace advice, a massive part of what they do. I like to call unions and if you've been around our community for a little while, I like to call them business mums. You can double check things that you're unsure of. You know, we, we're new to having rights in our industry. We're a passion industry. Everyone thinks that this is your dream job. And so we put up with a lot of shit and we don't, a lot of people don't really know what it is that we are meant to put up with or not really meant to put up with. So calling your business mum um, and getting help with how to approach negotiations and what is standard and normal and what's not um, is just one of the, I think, one of the top things that being part of the union is for. Um, you also get access to all our workshops. If you've been around, you will have seen that we've already done small business and co-op workshops, IP, OHS, with heaps more to come. Um, we're really here to support the entirety of the industry, whether you are a sole trader, freelancer, worker owner, part of a large AAA studio as they come more and more into Australia, um, the whole breadth. So um, you may have heard Justine's name a few times and I really want to welcome you, Justine, to the GWA family as part of this big marriage of organisations. Um, Justine has been one of our heroes at Professionals Australia and has taken such amazing care of us and what we care about. You often think that joining a big organisation comes with, you know, this kind of depersonalization, this anonymity, 
are we just numbers you know are there suddenly a lot of other agendas to care about but Justine and PA have given us the down-to-earth attention that we're really used to in our industry you know we joke about how we all know everyone or how we all talk to one another um, or work for one another um, and so we're used to kind of this down-to-earth vibe and we're still getting that with PA they made us where we are and they work to understand us and our idiosyncrasies. So thanks, Justine. And please talk more about our next tiers of membership. Thanks very much, Maze. Um, no, it's it's been such a wonderful journey um, and we're all so excited to be here today for the official launch. Um, it's been months in the making and in fact years and I, I will have to do another shout out to Tom Rowie who was instrumental in those early days um, in our discussions with GWU and Professionals Australia and I also want to acknowledge the work that Adrian Catt has done um, very much on the shop floor working with our members um, across the industry within um, GWA as well as the IT uh, areas as well. So I just wanted to squeeze in those thanks before I continue on with our tiered structure of membership. And um, I also want to say huge thanks to Tim and Mays and, and Taya and Mitch and everyone else, Jay, everyone else who's been involved in planning today. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it certainly has been um, a, a wonderful marriage so far and um, long live the honeymoon period. <laughs> I'm even getting the hang of the discord. Uh, <laughs> Yay! Slowly <laughs> but surely <laughs> we're getting there. But um, look, yeah, back to, back to business. In terms of union membership, you've all heard um, today the, the stories from, from Callum and Mitch and, um, and as Taya put it, you can be a winner every day by being part of your union. In the early days of discussions with uh, Tim and Mays and the rest of the community, uh, it became very apparent to us that it was really important that we form a group within PA that was fit for purpose, fit for your purpose. And so that's why um, we've come up with this tiered structure of membership. So Mays has already uh, taken you through uh, the, the community uh, level of membership and tier one. I'm just going to do a bit of a run through uh, of tier two and tier three. So you can see the, the graphic there up on the screen and hopefully those of you that are online can see it as well. So in, in uh, tier two, um, what you're getting there is everything that Maze has already run through. So you, you're getting all of that in addition to that, what you also get is the one-on-one -on -one advice and guidance from um, professional industrial staff at Professionals Australia. So that could range from anything like um, maybe you've got a performance review coming up. Maybe you're being taken down a performance improvement program. Maybe it's something nasty like um, a case of discrimination or bullying and harassment. Um, that's where you will get your invaluable advice from industrial officers and organisers at Professionals Australia. We will advise and guide you through those processes and how to um, hopefully get through um, what can often be an extremely stressful situation at, at your workplace. So. Um, we all spend a heck of a lot of time at work. You all know the long hours that you put in. If you're in a toxic workplace, that invariably impacts the rest of your life tenfold. Um, not just the hours that, it, at, that, that you're actually at your workplace, you will take it home with you. You will go to bed with it on your mind. You will wake up with it on your mind. Um, and that's where we are there to support and guide you and advise you through those processes. You've already heard from Callum and Mitch in terms of what they've been through and the support they've received. So at tier two, that's what you're getting. You're getting our advice and guidance through um, those processes. In addition to that, you will also get um, advice and guidance on your contract of employment. So you can check out um, whatever's in your contract of employment, make sure that it's legal, make sure that it's not undercutting any of the national employment standards or um, any of the other industrial laws that we've got here in Australia. We will be able to check that out for you, advise and guide you through it, um, and also any um, problematic clauses. Uh, we can advise you and uh, suggest rewrites of uh, problematic clauses. So um, that's what you will also find beneficial at tier two. 
Um, and that's where we find a lot of our bread and butter work is um, at the moment in terms of advising our members about the provisions of their contracts of employment. Um, in tier three, what you will come in at, you'll get everything we've already spoken about. So everything May spoke about um, at the first two levels and then obviously everything that I've just mentioned about at tier two. But when you come into tier three, um, what you are getting in addition to those things are things like independent contractor reviews. So that's different to what I was just talking about in terms of your, your common employment contract. This is where you might be um, on, on an ABN or setting up a contract for service. Um, so we can advise and guide you and represent you in terms of the complexities involved in a contract for service. More and more, we're seeing our members um, in this type of scenario. So it's not just within the gaming community that you find yourself having to contract yourself for a service. We're actually finding even in amongst our traditional collective areas um, that utilities companies, etc., are increasingly contracting out work, getting rid of full-time permanent positions and sending those jobs out to contractors. So invariably, we're actually finding um, a lot of our members you know, last week might have been a full-time permanent employee. Um, they've they've lost their job. The work's been contracted out. Now they're finding themselves having to try and get a job by getting a contract for service, getting themselves an ABN number, and and almost doing the same work. So it, it ties in with the increasing casualization of work in Australia, um, and insecurity of employment in Australia. So we are finding that we are increasingly providing advice for this type of scenario for our members. Um, so that's what you're getting at tier three is advice um, and guidance on these sorts of uh, contracts for service, if you like. Additionally to that, you get legal representation. And this is where I like to say, um, I've talked a lot about advice and guidance, but this is where I wanna talk to you about representation. This goes from the canteen to the commission. If you find yourself in a very difficult situation at your work where perhaps you might need to take an unfair dismissal case or perhaps a discrimination case, perhaps a bullying and harassment case, whatever that might be, we will represent you from the canteen to the commission. We will be beside you every step of the way. We will prepare the paperwork. We will write your submissions. We will do all of that for you and represent you in the industrial tribunal. And that comes in at tier three. So that's your legal representation. Another, I think, what's quite exciting um, category for tier three, um, and this is where I hope to see a lot of work done for Game Workers Australia, is that we will represent you um, in your collective workplace. So for those of you that are in perhaps a studio and you might want to improve your terms and conditions and salary on a collective basis within a studio, this is where we will come in. Studies have shown for years and years that workers that are at a workplace with a collective agreement are paid, paid more by tw up to 20%, sometimes more. You get a safe, and healthy workplace, you get consultation rights, you get union delegate rights, and a, a whole hope, host of other benefits by having a collective agreement at your workplace. And we've already begun a little bit of mapping work, um, myself and a couple of the other organisers within Professionals Australia, to identify some suitable targets where we would like to start working with you on getting a collective agreement at your workplace. And this is going to only benefit the whole of the rest of the gaming community in Australia. Once we start seeing um, collective agreements at some of these studios, it lifts the bar. It lifts the bar for everyone. So that's what we'd like to see happening um, within GWA. And I'd really hope that we can nail some EBAs within the next 12 to 18 months within um, Game Workers Australia. So that's what you're getting at tier three. Now, the good news is um, we've actually got a special offer on membership just for this launch weekend only. So to celebrate the launch of the GWA, we have a special offer of 50% off for the tier three membership for the first 12 months of your membership. So if you're not yet a member, join up today. I'm gonna try and juggle the various bits of paper I've got here and show you what to look for. There's plenty of these posted around uh, the venue here today in Sydney, and I believe you can access it uh, online as well. There's a QR code that'll take you through to a join form. 
This is a special offer live for this weekend only, okay? It closes at 11.59 tomorrow night on the 2nd of May. It will close. So join up to GWA today on tier three and get 50% off for your first 12 months of membership, okay? So that, Maze, is there anything else? Has, has that summed it all up? Amazing work, it. Justine, and it just gets me incredibly hype to think about it um, yeah. as a I'm pretty small business. <laughs> yeah, as a freelancer, I'm always thinking, well, it's just almost the end of financial year and, and uh, union dues are 100% tax deductible, so basically free. Um, yeah, That's so the part I'm, I forgot. I'm, Thanks. <laughs> very very happy um yeah yeah thanks so much okay thanks next... so um get get your phones out scan the qr code get on to tier three and get 50 percent off and join join gwa thanks a lot everyone thanks so much ted anderson a member of the pixel pushers union 512 makers of tonight we riot i want to extend my congratulations to game workers australia and to talk about why unions are important for game developers. Um, I've been working in the business for over 20 years now, and one of the biggest issues I run into is the same issues that most workers run into, which is wages, hours, and conditions. And through a union, we can make those better for all of us who work in this wonderful industry and making all the cool stuff that we love. Um, being in a workers cooperative like we are uh, with Pixel Pushers has been great because we democratically share what we're making, how we're making it, and the profits from the product we make. Again, congratulations, Game Workers Australia. Hi, my name's Natalie and I'm an industrial officer at Professionals Australia. I'd just like to extend a very warm welcome to the game workers on joining Professionals Australia. We look forward to working with you in the weeks, months and years ahead to achieve outcomes, improve conditions within your workplaces. If you have colleagues that aren't yet members of Professionals Australia, encourage them to join. It's standing together collectively that achieves outcomes that we would not otherwise have been able to achieve. Again, welcome and I look forward to working with you. Hi everyone and welcome to the new union for Australian game workers. Being part of the union is one of the best ways of ensuring proper pay and decent conditions, and it recognises the need for unity and working together to achieve it. Uh, make no mistake, and I'm sure you know already, um, it will take a strong voice to make the changes needed to create a fair and thriving industry. Um, but uh, joining the union is a critical first step. So again, welcome and good luck. Hi, I'm Pablo from the Game Dev Co-op Matajuegos in Argentina. Congratulations on the launch of GWA. We truly believe that game unions are vital to improving our lives and our workplaces as game creators, and that the work you all are doing is incredibly important. Thank you. Hi, I'm Melissa Cadwell. I'm a senior organizer with the Professionals Australia Victorian branch. And I want to say a massive shout out to you attending today's Game Workers Australia launch. So I hope it goes really well. And for those of you who are yet to join PA, speak to someone today because you want to be a part of the union that represents your needs. My name is Catherine Rodolfi. I am a civil engineer working for Transport for New South Wales. I have been a Professionals Australia member for over 25 years. Uh, membership is very important. It means that Professionals Australia is able to uh, improve conditions, work conditions for its professionals. It is also has given me personally a voice when I needed it most. Uh, today I am a Professionals Australia delegate in the hope that I will be able to provide the voice for other professionals to make conditions and to improve conditions for them. Uh, I'd like to end with uh, welcoming Game Workers Australia for joining and a big congratulations. Thank you so much to uh, Justine and Mays for that. And thank you so much for all of the people who have contributed these videos to really make all of the game workers around Australia feel at home. It's really fantastic to, to have, a, have a new place to call home here in the trade union movement. Look, we've opened it up for questions now in the chat. It's time to move on to Q&A. Um, so if you are in Sydney, you can log into the, the YouTube link um, that you would have got through Eventbrite or on our socials and you can post your questions there or 
Or of course, you can always do the time-honored method of shouting really loudly in the audience and we will find you and give you a microphone. So whatever works best for you, um, but we're really looking forward to hearing from you, Mace. Yeah, and after our Q&A session, we'll have another raffle. So stay tuned as well as our pretty epic finale video from Sally and the ACTU. But our first question, um, are there any obligations for workers to tell their company they're part of this union? And what are the employer's requirements to educating about the union? Well, yeah so um the, <laughs> the answer to that first yep. part of the question yeah look the, the first part of the question is uh, absolutely not um one of the things uh, that that we are uh, we really want to be clear with everyone in the audience whether you're in the sydney or at home listening uh is that if your employer asks you if you're a member of the union uh you are legally allowed to lie to them uh in fact your employer isn't even allowed to ask you the question uh the freedom of association provisions in the fair work act uh make it unlawful for your employer to make any decisions about you relating to whether you are or are not a union member and they are not even allowed to inquire about your status and if they do and uh, not only is that a big red flag for you um but you should feel free to lie to them absolutely and know that you are fully protected by the fair work act for doing so yeah, and then to the second part, employer requirements, educating about the union. Um, as far as I know, they have no requirement to do that. Mm, um, not at all. <laughs> and Look, uh, uh, employers, I think if they did, uh, yeah. they'd probably fight against it, <laughs> fight against that's, that requirement. That's correct. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, employers have been eroding our rights at work for a long time. Um, and uh, But look, they uh, your employer is required, is supposed to give you what's called a fair work information sheet when you join. Um, many of them don't, uh, but the Fair Work Information Sheet outlines what your rights are at work under the Fair Work Act, but doesn't mention unions. Uh, and that is unfortunate because unions are the ones who won you all of those rights in the first place. So um, it is really important that you educate your colleagues and your co-workers and your friends and family and anyone who passes you in the street about unions um, and make sure that you pass that information on to them because your employer is not going to do it for you. That's it. Can we have the next question, please, David? What's professional indemnity insurance? Right. So if you are someone like me and who's worked on um, a lot of different projects, um, you'll get very used to seeing oh, if you break this NDA, you'll be accountable for all of the sales lost for this massive AAA game or you will be accountable for this and this or all of these different kinds of things. Um, and you'll often see just waiving some rights or something like that as well, or just saying that you'll be accountable if you mess up at work. Um, this is where that insurance comes in. And um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what other parts are there, Tim? Well, look, I'm um, so it's, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, Please. Justine, go for it. Welcome to stage, Justine McCarthy. Oh. Please sit down, Justine McCarthy. <laughs> ah, right. Is oh. we've still got Jill, um, our beautiful CEO of PA in the chat. David, is that a manageable thing? Can we get Jill onto the stream? Oh, David's looking panicked. Will give us one second. It's okay. He's what saying he's saying? not panicked. Okay. okay. All right. We can hear her. We can hear you, Jill. That's Please okay. go ahead. Fantastic. Um, yes, all I was wanting to say about the professional indemnity insurance is that as a member of PA, um, you will have access to um, our insurance brokers who can provide this uh, form of insurance to you, and uh, they usually get. Uh, very good deals for uh, our union members when it comes to professional indemnity insurance. Um, as you can imagine, lots of other professions, including our engineers um, who are building infrastructure projects, etc., um, all require professional indemnity insurance. And so uh, we, we work uh, in partnership with an insurance broker to make sure that you can get a really good deal for that insurance. Um, the other thing I would like to also point out is that um, depending again on where you work, uh, we, would, we would also be looking at um, what your employer 
uh, provides in terms of professional indemnity insurance because many employers uh, do and indeed should provide you with coverage so that you don't have to pay um, additional insurance. But again, we know that some employers don't do that. Um, so you need to protect yourselves. But also, again, if you're doing work as a contractor, uh, yes, you will need to access that sort of insurance. So, so we'll provide uh, you with access to our brokers who'll get you a good deal. Thank you. Yeah, and as, as I understand it, you know, you can go to the broker and talk all about your specific situation so that they can cater for what your concerns are, which mm. might change or, you know, that could be an ongoing thing. Mm. Now, I, I understand a, we... Uh, maybe oh. just a quick example. So we had someone actually approach us, a, a freelancer last year, uh, whose employer, or not employer, the person who had subcontracted them was threatening to sue them for nearly $200,000 uh, if they broke the contract or alleging that they had, you know, uh, would be um, devaluing the IP, I think was the words being used. And, and that kind of outrageous threat is really just used to kind of crush these independent contractors and make them too afraid to to send those reminders about that unpaid invoice, you know, or, or to stand up and negotiate for a higher percentage of the royalties. So we're really keen for our independent contractors to access this um, and give themselves a bit of peace of mind, you know, when it comes to negotiating those bigger deals with, with people. Yeah, that was an incredibly relatable case. Um, and it made me think of a time where I, I had finished a contract. I had done all of the work that was set out in our contract. When you're a freelancer, it's meant to be very clear what that work is and when you'll be paid for it and all of that. Um, and I had finished and then my this boss wanted me to continue and it was just not happening. Um, so I can imagine if I was then threatened um, with hundreds of thousands of dollars, that would have freaked me out a lot. So yeah, really, Absolutely. yeah, that would have been nice. Um, um, so I understand that, that we have a- question? Oh, we've got a mic. We have a question in the in audience. The audience. Yeah. Um, I was just, on on the topic of the last question, you said it was it's completely legal to uh, lie about whether we're part of a union. But is there any reason to tell them that we're part of a union, or should across the board we just say, no, I'm not part of a union, and no, you cannot ask me that question. Well, I think if you said you weren't part of a union, then you said you're not allowed to ask me the question. You you, you probably give the game away. So I'd, I'd probably work on the uh, the delivery of that one. Um, but it is definitely, a look, the answer to that is that you need to, we think everyone, and this advice applies to anyone, whether you're in games or not, you know, but, but you need to be strategic about the information you share with your employer if you are worried about your job. That's just a, a basic level of information control you should have when you're having a discussion with your employer. If you feel your job is precarious, then you need to use your best judgment to, you know, to make sure that you protect yourself. Um, if you know that, if you've spoken to your colleagues and you know that 90% of the people there in the union, we're loud and proud, you know, and, and that's the point in when you want to be negotiating that collective agreement, that enterprise bargaining agreement, at which will become very obvious to your employer that there are a lot of union members on this workplace and they need to come to the table and negotiate. Um, but if, it, if you know it's just you and you're a little bit worried, look, our advice to you is that you need to take steps to protect yourself. And if one of those steps is keeping your union membership on the down low, until such a time as you've got a critical mass of people to back you up, then that's what you've got to do. So you've got to use your best judgment. Does that answer the question? question? Oh, we have another question. Oh, another yeah, question from the I was wondering. So, okay. uh, so let's say like, you know, I sign up for my union. I have a job for ages. You guys help me out. It's really good. But then I lose my job or I get sick. Is there a way I can suspend my dues during that time? Yep, that's right. Yeah, so look, um, unions are not banks. Uh, you know, they're not like um, big corporations who are going to come to your house and break your knees to get that money off you. Um, you can call up and speak to someone at any time to discuss your situation. Um, you know, you could reduce the level you're paying. You could suspend temporarily. You can ask for some hardship. It's all, yeah, it's, it's a very, very common practice, you know. Uh, unions yeah, are here to support yeah. you um, through thick and thin. Um, and, you know, certainly any union around Australia, if you call them up today and said, I'm having trouble, I can't pay my bills, you know, I can't pay my union membership, 
they'll offer you something to suspend you or put you on hold for a few months. It's you just need to call up and ask. They're all humans who will answer the question for you and, and help you out. Yeah, everything that Tim said, and also, um, for instance, if you're uh, uh, having a baby and taking maternity leave or um, have a, a health issue and you're going to be hospitalised for s several months or whatever, there um, are definitely uh, provisions within our membership to be able to put your membership on hold while you go through those life experiences. So um, I can personally say I took maternity leave in 2018 and it was very reassuring to retain my own union membership um, but not have to pay the dues while I, I wasn't earning an income as such, other than the benefit, of course, of getting uh, paid maternity leave, which is another benefit. So, yeah. Thank you. All right. And I think we have our next question from the stream chat. Is GWA the right place for marketing staff and other staff working in the games space? Yeah. Um, so look, absolutely anyone working for um, a games company can join uh, GWA and, and get the protection and support um, that you deserve. Um, there's, look, the line is obviously a little bit blurry in games. You know, you might be working for a large media company, in which case, you know, it might be worth looking at a different union such as the Media Alliance. But if you're working in that field of game development or in the games industry, um, yes, you, you, we're the right union for you. So we're very much looking forward to having you. Um, and, you know, we really want to make sure that, you know, it's really uh, important to us that everyone is represented in games because we know that it's all connected, right? We know that it doesn't just begin and end with, you know, the programmers or begin and end with the designers. You know, it, it's it's stretching from one end to the other, you know, and, and you know, uh, and Maze, obviously, you know, you know all about the contractors and the freelancers who contribute to the development of that and also get forgotten. So, so we are very keen to make sure that everyone in the entire ecosystem is captured. So including the marketing staff and other staff, yes. We have right, one more. Can I can add to that if you like. Oh, sorry, hang on. I think we have a comment from Jill behind the scenes. From Jill? Oh, sorry, one second. Oh, Justine, yep, sorry. Please, Justine, go ahead. Uh, should be a simple one. So if I was already a member of Professionals Australia before the formation of GWA and was part of uh, GWU, does that automatically make me a member of GWA or do you need to like call someone up and switch my membership across? Um, so we will hopefully make contact with you uh, and organize. So we, we have provided, um, if you are a member of Game Workers uh, Unite prior to this, we have provided all your content information to PA to hunt you down and convert your membership over. Um, or uh, also, you can just call up any time and switch it over. But hopefully, that process will be um, automated. Uh, not automated. Real humans will be doing it. But hopefully, that process will occur behind the scenes, and you will eventually be spoken to and and uh, receive an email or a phone call to convert your membership over if you want to. Um, and uh, yeah, so we we. We will be taking care of that hopefully, but you can speed up the process by picking up the phone to the member hotline and, and giving them a call. Yeah, or email as well. They're pretty responsive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, a question from the stream. What are your views on employee blacklists and what can be done to combat them? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah tricky one. Um, but look, our view on employee blacklist is that they're a disgusting tool used by incompetent managers uh, to keep out staff who ask too many questions. That's certainly the, the main view on it. Um, but look, uh, what can be done to combat them is uh, we um, obviously, look, unfortunately, when it comes to directly hiring, you know, we, we know that employers do have the final say. Um, we also know there's a lot of discrimination, which we're helping to push back against. Um, but what we can do to combat them in general um, is to uh, add uh, some information to the collective agreements if we can negotiate those that specify, you know, certain requirements and such in the hiring practices. Um, and we can also help push against that by uh, improving the support for worker co-ops where people get to make, you know, collective decisions about who's hired and who's not. Uh, and, you know, when it, it, it all comes down to basically trying to change the way that that organization is structured, whether it's 
you making co-ops or whether it's providing um, an enterprise bargaining agreement that has that kind of information in it and it allows you know the union uh to to kind of specify the conditions under which people are hired and make sure that they are you know getting rid of any of these kind of blacklists that employers may be keeping behind the scenes like you can put a lot of things into an enterprise bargaining agreement that you probably wouldn't expect like some unions have put in uh you know specified what type of tea is in the lunchroom and that kind of thing so you really can go down to very very granular level of detail if you want um but to get that it really is about building that union membership and that power inside the uh studio to make sure that the bosses of that studio know that they can't get away with blacklisting uh because the whole studio will be in revolt if they continue with those practices I think another point, you know, especially as a minority in games is that part of being a part of this community and part of being a part of marginalized run communities as well. So whether it's not the union, it might be like a women in games, it might be a non-binary in games, black in games, all of these kinds of different um, communities is that they are for helping you skip those really toxic workplaces you know bosses who you might be worried about screwing over who would blacklist you from the industry or something like that you know we're able to help point out those places and skip them they're no longer mm. a rite mm. of passage into this industry and there mm. are actually plenty of good places to work that aren't those so you know if you do get worried about okay this guy is harassing me but he's you know this special important star child in the industry it's actually okay to leave you know <laughs> um there are plenty of opportunities and we are here to help find those opportunities for you and support you through that process of getting to a better place um mm. we don't need to put up with those people anymore that's right and look one of the <laughs> you know things that a lot of people uh come to our community and discover is that they can very openly ask questions about the conditions at employers in a secure place and get honest information about what it's like to work there you know and in a way that you can't really openly do in our industry in very many places um, except very quiet side rooms at a, at a you know at event or something like that or in the dms um, so you know we are we are providing and we are pushing back on that and making sure that everyone knows about the wages and conditions of these places everyone knows about the kind of behavior to expect um, and as may says it's not a rite of passage anymore to just get humiliated or suffer through a crappy job you know because we will help you avoid that and you can start look it is free to become to join our community um it doesn't make you a member of the union but it will give you an idea of you know what everyone in there is doing and get to chat to some like-minded people I um, mean, you can ask questions like that and learn more about how to, you know, protect yourself from those situations. Uh, comrades, yes. uh, we have uh, Sana here uh, at Sydney who'd like to also jump in on this question. They're an industrial officer with Professionals Australia. Ah, yes. amazing. Absolutely. Hello, hello. Welcome. Um, also, just one thing I wanted to add in regards to this question is um, there are some laws under the Fair Work Act that if you're a prospective employee and you're not getting a job, for example, because of your... Um, involvement with the union, then there is um, certain legal claims that we can make. And I know um, if you were to join as a tier three member, then we could run legal cases for you on that. Um, so that is also a protection that is available for people um, who are not employees of an organization, but want to be, but are blacklisted because of their involvement with a union or because they've exercised other workplace rights, for example, like asking to be paid correctly and that kind of thing. Amazing. Thank you so much, Asana. Thank you very much. Okay. Do we have another question from the stream? I think we have one lined up. Sorry, just a second. Coming up to stream. Is there consulting crossover between GWA and IGEA? So we fundamentally represent different people. Um, IGEA membership is for owners of studios um, and owners of businesses, while our membership is the opposite, um, apart from, mm -hmm. you know, owners of small businesses like freelancers and that kind of thing. So at those places, um, our 
services really or our points is slightly different but at the same time we also have a lot of shared values which is you know the stability of this industry and the representation of our industry on a national and governmental level so you know yeah there are things that we can work together on and things that we might have a bit of opposition on Oh, sorry. I think uh, Jill, do you want to go to the David? Can you please move Jill to the pipe? Jill's audio to the screen. All right, you're good to go, Jill. Fantastic. Look, I just wanted to reinforce what what Mays was talking about, and I'm sure Tim uh, is also going to reinforce. Is that um, yes, the IGEA is is really representing the employers and the big studios. I know there's some smaller studios there as well. Um, and so, uh, yes, we will have some uh, issues in common with the IGA, but uh, one of the things that I'm really keen to do now that we've officially launched Game Workers Australia is to uh, contact the IGA to uh, basically uh, officially start some form of consultation with us around uh, the issues affecting the industry. Uh, also to, um, I think, put them... Uh, uh, on alert that we will be coming into the industry. Uh, we will be uh, seeking to uh, negotiate enterprise agreements uh, across the sector and that we will be expecting improvements in pay and conditions uh, for game workers. So that's something that is on our agenda for the next couple of weeks um, is official notification to the IGA uh, about the status of GWA in representing you and that uh, we will we, we expect um, as other uh, employer and industry associations, we expect them to be consulting with us on a whole range of issues going forward. So that's going to be really important for us. And, and as May said, we're not necessarily going to agree with them on everything, clearly not, but there will be things that we will want to do to make sure that we support a strong industry, but we want to we want to make sure that the benefits of that industry flow through to all of you, as well as the business uh, and the owners of those businesses. Thank you. And we can get Tim's audio back again as well. All right. Um, <laughs> thanks so much, Jill, for chiming in on that. And, um, you know, we, we have a lot of shared colleagues between IGEA and us too as everyone in the games industry in Australia knows, we do all know each other. Um, so it shouldn't be too hard to have these kinds of conversations. Tim, are we back or should we just pop onto the next stream question? All right, next stream question. Yeah. Are there resources or tips available on how best go about unionizing my workplace? Sorry for fumbling the reading on that. There sure is. Um, as soon as you become um, a member of PA, um, you log into your member portal and there are all these resources on there straight up. Um, at the same time, you can join our community and you can start getting advice and sharing stories of how different people in different positions have started doing that as well. Um, and then a lot of these things are also Googleable. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that's true to say, um, but yeah, these resources are up and around and everywhere, which is which is really great. And we, and we can provide. Can them I too, jump Mays. in on that too? Oh. <laughs> yes, yeah, snap, absolutely. Jill. <laughs> Sorry, it's Hi, Justine here. Hi, snap, Jill. We Hi, said Justine. it at the same time. Hello. Um, the best, yeah, there's heaps of online um, resources through our portal and um, obviously through your community uh, Discord, but um, probably the best resource you can get is um, pick up the phone and talk to one of the PA organisers. Um, this is our bread and butter stuff. Um, we don't have to, you, you know, we're, we're used to working with hostile employers um, or greenfield, what we'd call greenfield sites, where you might be the only union member. We can meet you in a cafe, a car park, 
um, I don't even want to tell you where I've had union meetings, to be quite honest, but um, we can start <laughs> the process wherever suits you. Um, and what we can talk to you about, the best place to start is by what we call mapping your workplace. So that's about um, who works there, uh, what are the relationships, what's the relationship mapping look like, who do they hang out with um, at lunchtime, um, who, who goes to bowling together, who does, who plays this game together, whatever. Um, okay, let's start mapping it out. What are their views? Um, so that would be the, the place that we would start. Um, that would be the tool or tip that we would start with was simply mapping the workplace um, and getting to know a bit more about you and your workplace. And then we can take it from there um, right up to the point where we um, start forming uh, collectives at your workplace and then talk about getting some union delegates and getting them onto union uh, delegate training. Um, which I think Callum spoke about. It was um, absolute thrill to have Callum at delegate training. Um, so yeah, there's there's online resources, but there's also real people, real humans that you can talk to. We've got organisers here today. There's Kathleen down the back there. She's the one with the purple hair sitting at the table. She's an organiser there. Um, also heads up our ACT uh, division um, branch. And then we've got Adrian Cat in the audience too. Give us a wave, Adrian. Yeah, very, very experienced organisers. So um, that's that's where we'd start. Thanks. Yeah, we've even had some people um, telling us that, you know, they've posted a link to one of our tweets or something like that and being like, hey, has anyone heard of this? And then canvassing based off of the emoji reacts. So, <laughs> you know, that's pretty games industry. <laughs> um, you know, yeah. I think think that we can we can definitely do that. We've also had people say, um, you know, contact us and be like, hey, I've joined this workplace. Do you know if there's anyone else around? And we can contact other members and be like, mm. hey, someone at your workplace is asking if there's anyone around. Do you want to connect? And we can help facilitate that as well. Yeah. yeah and that's, that's uh, I'm sorry, my audio is back now. You probably heard my mechanical keyboard. Apologies, everyone. Um, but uh, we have now that studios are getting more and more remote, that's, just, that's something that's becoming more and more useful. You know, we've got a couple of studios uh, in Australia that I can think of which have you know, a dozen members in our Discord, for example, and they don't necessarily see each other every day or even know who they are. So, you know, but we are working to, to bring you together behind the scenes and make sure you can speak to your colleagues and co-workers. Mm. All right, I think we have one or two more questions and then we're heading, we have quite a few more questions I'm, I'm hearing from, from the back. Uh, well, I think a could, according to uh, our run sheet, we've got five more minutes before we draw our last raffle and That's then right. the actu awesome video so um yeah five in chief, more minutes Sally all right um okay <laughs> yes. i'll read this one out does uh, gwa plan on submitting to government inquiries or committees relating to the games industry in australia or is this considered outside the role um absolutely we will be submitting to government inquiries and committees uh you could not stop us from doing that um and it's going to be the first time uh in our history that anyone has submitted with an eye to looking out for the workers in the industry rather than just the profit line of the studios. So we will absolutely be doing that. Um, and, and I can reassure you that we are already working with Professionals Australia uh, on submissions to things like the, the uh, Professional Employees Award um, to improving the wages and conditions and, and uh, even uh, updating the terminology in those awards to reflect the games industry. So we are already doing that um, and, and uh, we are not going to stop doing that. Yeah, and you know, state government. Um, I'm in Victoria and Screen Vic. You know, people are all these organisations are really knocking our door down to get an idea because they also see that you know our voices are underrepresented. So all different kinds of organisations across different states, across different funding bodies, across different levels of government, they really are knocking our door down. And if they're not, then we'll knock theirs down. So, yeah, there's a real keenness um, for us to be represented in our voices. Um, let's get another question. Is there any way to pay multiple years in advance? For those of us with very lumpy incomes, it can help a lot to pay tax deductible things on release years. Ah, <laughs> yes, very relatable. Is that? Yeah, yeah, that's a How great can, question. Maybe a more me Good mechanical question. question for Justine, if you're there. Can you pay more than 12 months at a time? Uh, 
Good question. I don't actually know anyone that has, but um, I'm sure we can find a way to make it work for sure. Yeah, <laughs> surely. <laughs> Look, if that, I, I mean, that's I think, a great yeah, suggestion. If, if that's something that more people want, then we will, um, and I know you're listening to this, Jill, so I'm just going to say we'll put pressure on PA to make it happen. Um, you know, if that's something that would really help our members and that would be a really good thing for them, then we will raise that. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. All right, I think we'll get to the lucky last one. Thanks for your responses. Does the GWA membership cover you if you move to the film industry from games? Well, you can be a part of multiple unions at once. That's right. As well. There's no limitation yeah. on how many unions you can join, except for what you can afford to pay. Um, but look, the answer to that question broadly is, is no, I'm sorry. Um, the film industry is the domain of the excellent media, entertainment and arts alliance. Um, and if you're no longer working in games and there's no even remotely game related work that you're doing, then you are best placed to join the media, entertainment and arts alliance or MIA, um, and they will help you out with that. Interactive films. There we go. Game. <laughs> there you go. That's right. Yeah. Look, we do recognize, you know, I think it's worth taking 30 seconds to say that the line between, you know, the line for games has always been a bit blurry and unions are very much based on what your work is when they try to figure out which one you should join. But games, mm -hmm. the reason that it's taken quite a long time to get to this point is because games very much straddle that line between information technology and, and creative arts uh, in a way that has, you know, been really, um, bewildering to industrial relations people uh, and, and to, you know, union leaders and stuff. So that's one of the reasons why we're so glad to see people like PA and Jill come to the table and lead this initiative, um, because it really is kind of a gray area and we are pushing very hard to make it, uh, you know, nice and clear for everyone. Yeah, and PA have really met us where we are on that, you know, um, working across things that are interactive art experiences or games or all of this kind of thing. And, you know, we would all know from the different ways that um, government funding wants us to be or not to be games that it can be um, a bit blurry. But, yeah, I think that's a, a lovely question to finish on. Yeah. How about a, right. another 100, 100 bucks from JB Hi-Fi? Yeah. Oh, oh, actually, sorry, we're going, to, we're going to watch a video first. A beautiful yeah. video, um, uh, some last messages of support. Please, Thanks please so much. put the hat on and stand there awkwardly, Tay, and we'll be right back. Hi, everyone. My name is Paris Marks. I'm a Canadian technology writer and the host of the Tech Won't Save Us podcast. I'm so excited to hear about the launch of Game Workers Australia. Um, I had the great pleasure of getting to know some of the folks who are involved with the union last time I was in Australia in 2019. And, you know, I think it's just so incredible to see how things are moving forward down there. You know, we've seen a lot of progress, I think, with organizing and efforts toward unionization at games companies around the world in recent years. And so now at the launch of Game Workers Australia, I can't wait to see what's going to happen next in your country. Um, I'm hoping uh, at some point, I'll be able to get down there again soon uh, once, you know, this pandemic allows. Um, but I wish you the best. I hope you have a great launch event and good luck. Hi, I'm Andrew Wilkins from the Engineers Division, and I'm delighted to welcome Game Workers Australia into our union, Professionals Australia. With the collective power of a union at your back, I'm really excited to see what we can achieve together. Hi, I'm Kathleen, the director of the ACT Division of Professionals Australia. Just want to welcome the Game Workers United Union into PA and wish you all the best during your launch. Hi, it's Gordon Brock from New South Wales PA and the Local Government Engineers Association. Just extending our new comrades from GWA a very warm welcome as you join our organisation. I look forward to working collectively with you as we fight for secure jobs in your industry, uh, respect at work and better rates of pay. So welcome again, and I look forward to what we can achieve together on behalf of our membership. All right. All right. We're ready to rock. Taya, please draw.
Thank you very much. Two, it is not our job to tell them uh, unless you direct us to. Uh, so yeah, if at any point you feel like your employer may have taken any sort of adverse action against you, uh, either for being a member of a union or uh, being uh, for for your identity, because uh, a marginalized identity, either as a as a person who's queer or a person of color or anything of the sort, make sure you get in contact with the union because we want to help you. Because that's not on. That is a breach of the law. They are not allowed to do that. Uh, so. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for enjoying my raffle antics. Uh, back to you, comrades. Thank you very much, Taylor, and congratulations to Lara Croft, uh, a famous comrade. Let's, I think we've got one or two more videos before we wrap up, um, so let's make it happen. Hi, this is Brendan Keogh at Queensland University of Technology, and I just wanted to say congratulations to Game Workers Australia on this monumentous achievement um, forming Australia's first Game Workers Union. Um, the Australian game industry has been through its highs and lows over the last couple of decades, but what's really defined it throughout that time is a really collegial, collaborative um, group of workers across the entire nation in very in a way that is very different to the game, what the game industry is commonly understood as um, as very competitive and very secretive um, but of course at the same time it's been a lot of precarity a lot of really big challenges so very very exciting to see what game workers australia does in this space um, and you know just shining a light forward for all digital and creative workers who similarly need to come together to protect their rights so congratulations game workers australia I'm Dominic, an organiser with Professionals Australia here in Adelaide. Uh, just a quick message to welcome Game Workers Australia to the Professionals Australia family. Really looking forward to working with everyone to fight for better paying conditions for all game workers around the country. Hi, I'm Justine McCarthy, Lead Organiser and Deputy Director for Professionals Australia in the New South Wales branch. Huge congratulations and welcome to GWA. It's great to have you um, as a part of Professionals Australia. It's been a long time coming. I'm really looking forward to working with you all uh, on securing a better games industry in Australia and working on the issues that matter most to you all. So once again, congratulations and see you soon. Don't forget to take advantage of the special offer on membership if you're not already a member. We've got 50% off for your first 12 months of membership. So get on board. Organising with game workers was one of the best parts of my job at Professionals Australia. And it's been so exciting to see you grow from a small group of dedicated activists into a fully fledged union. You've already helped so many workers in the industry, and I can't wait to see what you achieve next. We're coming to the end of our launch stream, and we'd really like to say a massive thanks for everyone for coming and for helping out. Some of us behind the scenes people who you didn't see today but deserve a huge shout out are Brooke Mott, Jay Stewart, Michaela Ledwidge. Kaylin Congido and uh, Carve Tabar, and extra special thanks to David Hayden for running this sick stream and also being a massive support um, for us over the last few years with our work, with our efforts when we were working with Mia, and also just a big part of my own personal development into unionization. David and Tim, you've been um, pretty huge parts of my life. So, yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Maze. And look, thank you, everyone. And we really can't overstate just what a big deal this is for us and for our, our many hundreds of members uh, so far to get to this point. Um, look, there's a couple more people to thank off the top of my head, uh, Felicia, uh, for being here from the start, helping us out. Um, we've got our newly elected international delegate, Elliot, for her work uh, liaising with the other game workers uh, around the, the world. Um, and of course, Tom Rowie, who you just saw there, who who actually kicked off our relationship with Professionals Australia, and we, we certainly wouldn't be here without him. Um, so look, that brings us to the end of our launch stream. Uh, we're really excited. Please, everyone, come and join the community. Um, join the union. If you're in Sydney, come and join everyone. Uh, you know, come on down. We've got games, beverages, food. The whole place is set up just for you. Um, and look, to wrap things off, uh, we have a special video from the Australian Council of Trade Unions, Gamer in Chief, Sally McManus, uh, which we will play for you right now. What do you see? 
Press the call button to get more intel. Hi, I'm Sally McManus. I'm the leader of the Australian Council of Trade Unions. The ACTU is a union for all other unions in Australia. We're the voice of working people. The ACTU is the reason why we have Medicare, superannuation, pay parental leave, even JobKeeper, and also minimum wage rises every year. The ACTU unites unions to campaign for improvements for everyone. Yeah, so I'm a union boss, a high level union boss, and the big business and bad governments do not want to come across in a boss fight. I'm also a gamer. I've been playing since the days of DOS. My favorite PC game is Civilization. I have a PlayStation. I love a stealth game like Metal Gear Solid or anything, quite frankly, with a sniper. I also love an open world. I'm currently playing Elden Ring. So I'm in your community too. Congratulations to Game Workers Unite and Professionals Australia for establishing Game Workers Australia, for which for the first time will provide game workers with industrial representation and the ability to achieve better wages and conditions of employment. I know how great our game industry is and how creative Australian game workers are. Although the video game industry generates millions of dollars, highly skilled, passionate, creative game workers face low wages, short-term contracts, job insecurity, long working hours, and high levels of stress. By joining Game Workers Australia, you'll build collective strength, being able to advocate for changes in the industry and negotiate better pay and conditions because you are stronger together. Being in a union is like being able to summon fighters to be by your side when it counts. Who would not go into life without that? As Professionals Australia is affiliated to the ACTU, you'll also be part of the broader union movement in Australia, working to improve the lives of workers, their families and their communities across the country, doing good stuff for everyone.